Uh, social state is a fiction, and still we have followers who follow this idea. What is the reason hidden behind that fact? Maybe if you have a look at the numbers, you will see that at least 40% are in the redistribution industry. And they are interested to, to keep it and to, to put it forward. Then you have another 40% on the receiver side. I said, I said they are the victims, but they don't feel as victims. They, they think that it's good for us to get the money. And so if you add the 40% uh, of redistribution with the 40% of people who are uh, uh, on the receiver side, I call them the, the tax keepers, then it, it makes a, a lot of people in favor of that and nobody asks uh, how it will end. Of course, uh, we can afford to do it maybe for the next five years, maybe for the next 10 years, in Switzerland, maybe even for the next 20 years. But if we have a look at the figures, how it goes up in education, in healthcare, and so on, then you must have the feeling that it cannot be sustainable. Because you can raise the taxes, you can raise it, but you will reach a point where if you raise taxes, you will have less income in the state. And this will be a very dangerous point I, I don't say that it's in five years or in 10 years and in 15 years, but it will happen that the whole system cannot be uh, kept uh, in, in the same way as we do it now. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, maybe, maybe I would like to ask for, I would like to ask for what will be the solution of the future implicit uh, pension debts? What do you think would be a future solution? Yeah. You know, one of the, the worst things we are doing, and I call myself we as the generation of the grandfathers, uh, in all times, all over history, it was the aim of the older generation that the next generation is at least in the same or in a better situation. That's an anthropological uh, uh, thing. But what we do now is that we live on a very high level of pension system, but that we do it at the expense of indebtedness. And uh, in, in fact, uh, every new human being is born, has, uh, is born with a, a lot of, uh, of indebtedness. And uh, it's very hard to get out of this uh, indefinite trend. Uh, one thing would be that we, we kept the whole thing. And we had a vote in Switzerland where we said we should stop, uh, we should stop indefinite at a rate. And uh, the government should not be allowed to take uh, more money from, from, uh, uh, from the uh, market. Uh, but. Uh, it worked in a way, but of course they found out a lot of exceptions. And now they make indebt by exception. But it's better than uh, if you make indebt just by, by normal uh, thing. And uh, of course it could be the aim of a party uh, to tell the people, let's stop that. It's not good for the young people. And maybe the party system should uh, change with, uh, and it should be uh, a new party of the young victims of the system <laughs> who realize uh, that uh, in, a, in a way they have to pay it in, uh, in 10 or 20 or 30 years. So I encourage young people to say no to this uh, kind of adaptment. <laughs> Uh, so, thank you. Uh, so, I would like to pose my uh, question in English. I'm Pavel Fukac. I'm a regional director at uh, Students for Liberty. So, I would be interested in uh, 
your take on the impact of uh, like massive uh, welfare state on innovation and like economic dynamism in Europe? Because at least to me, it seems that uh, when you have a huge welfare state, you suddenly you don't have that much rate of uh, new companies emerging, entrepreneurship and uh, like growth itself. So like I would be interested in your take on this. Thank you. You know, the entrepreneurs are very adaptive. And uh, they take reality as it is. And they try to find out the best way to cooperate with the system that is here. So I take the insurance system for the example. They adapt and they just find out the loopholes of uh, the uh, state uh, uh, insurance system and uh, it works in a way but uh, if you look for good partners uh, to fight against uh, redistribution it's very hard to find it in uh, actual uh, big uh, companies because in a way they are in the same boat and they try to find a way to uh, to adapt to what is done. Uh, and in fact, uh, they have no other way. I don't accuse them. Uh, if you offer this kind of, of benefits to a lot of customers, then it's not uh, uh, the task of, uh, of the entrepreneurs to stop it. They have to take what they get. And uh, this is, it makes more difficult to get out of the trap but you have not all the, the free market oriented enterprises on your side. But because a lot of enterprises are also beneficiaries of, uh, of, uh, of redistribution. Because people can't afford things that they couldn't afford and there would be no redistribution. So it makes the thing more complicated uh, and uh, more difficult. But it's not impossible. Uh, if you start to, to know all these complex uh, things, how they uh, go together, uh, you start to also to find out the way out of the trail. Thanks. Was it the question? More or less? Yeah. 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 Good evening, my name is Martin Rigoli, I'm from the F.A. Hayek Foundation, and I will be posing a question in English. Uh, I would like to ask you a question about a trend that is becoming more and more popular among theoreticians, also politicians, the basic income. The universal income that is becoming the new trend of the social policy. Do you think this will speed up the process of the impeding crisis? Do you think it will come sooner as a result of that, or do you think it's just a way of appeasing some part of the population that could basically revolt against the system to buy more supporters for it? What is your stance on what could be the effect of the basic income? Because it's being tried, I think, in some scale in Finland, and I think some countries will follow soon. So I would very much appreciate your view on the universal income. Thank you very much. It's a very interesting approach, and we shouldn't be against the first step. But uh, we had a vote in Switzerland on, on the same topic, okay. and it was rejected by over 60% uh, of the people. The reason was more psychological than economic, because uh, Swiss people are used to, to work, and uh, they hate the idea that you get something uh, for nothing. And uh, this reason is that, oh, we had to work too all of our life. Why should now people get money uh, without any uh, uh, effort? But of course, if you look at it on a, on a more uh, economical way, uh, it, it would be a good idea to replace the whole industry of redistribution, who tries to find out who needs something and who needs nothing. And if you give to everybody, you exclude uh, really a lot of people. But in fact, uh, 
uh, and it's, it, it would be a dramatic change of, of, uh, of the state. But I don't believe that uh, it, uh, this change will happen. It would just add it to the whole system of redistribution we have already. If you really go to the bottom and say, but then let's price everything. Everybody gets the money uh, and the basic income, but then there is no, no redistribution in, uh, in education, in healthcare, in, in, uh, in uh, public transport and so on, and then we can abolish all the uh, uh, uh infrastructure things, then it starts to make some, um, uh, to uh, get some charm. I say it's not never first best, but maybe uh, second best, but I don't believe that uh, it could work. But I am in favor of experiments, and uh, maybe if, if uh, they start some experiments on a, on a local level, why not? And let's, uh, let's look uh, how it works. What we do in Switzerland now, in fact, that we have basic income, but we combine it with a lot of very complicated things, and uh, the, the task to find out who are really the needy people is so complicated and so, also so corrupt uh, that, uh, that it's a whole machinery uh, that, uh, that lives from finding out who is the, the real poor. And I'm convinced that they don't find the real poor. They give it to, 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 uh, to, the, to the wrong people. And I had once a discussion in India, and they said India makes a lot of redistribution. And redistribution starts by taking from the rich and giving to the poor. But in our system, it starts by taking to the, from the rich and giving to the big system. And in fact, in the end, nothing, or practically nothing, comes out of the system to the really poor. And maybe that's India, it's a, it's a special case, but India is everywhere a little bit. We, we should uh, have a look on which euro that we take away from rich comes back to the really needy people, and which part of this euro is wasted in a big bureaucracy finding out who really needs this euro. Start 
by exchange, by learning, by doing, by uh, error and trial, uh, by challenge and response, uh, and by competition, but I put the learning theory above the theory of competition. Uh, learning is the most important thing. And to, to learn in a, in a social framework, coercion doesn't work. And I can uh, tell to my socialist friends, uh, of course we have the same aim. We want that people help each other spontaneously, that they are more friendly, uh, more adaptive, uh, more, more peaceful and so on. That's, we have the same aim. But with your method, you will just go in the opposite way. And uh, we even, it's not uh, a discussion in theory. We made the experience in the 20th century. And uh, we should, uh, and you made it more than we made it. And uh, uh, I'm sure that uh, in the long run, the way uh, of, of control and uh, coercion is really uh, dead end and uh, it doesn't work. Uh, if, if the aim to make people uh, more peaceful, more, more social, uh, is the same, but it's the wrong method. It's just anthropologically uh, uh, faithful. And then, my name is Aumian, and I'm the first one to Dobrý den, já jsem Lukáš, budu mluvit po slovensky. Tak a otázka zní, či by pomohlo, či by na Slovensku, kdyby jsme úplně zprivatizovali školstvo a zdravotnictví. Či by to mohlo být jeden z těch prvních kroků, jak se dostaneme do té You know, I started to be really a uh, promoter of uh, privatizing. But what means uh, privatizing? Privatizing means to sell. And uh, it's not sure that the company or the person to whom you sell something will be, in every case, a better performance than uh, the people who done it before. So, I change my mind and I say the first step is not privatizing, the first step is ask for real prices. And uh, this will mean that a lot of people cannot afford good education and good health service. But then give the money to the people directly and not put it in the system. So uh, I call it the, the, the assistance of subject. And then allow uh, private companies to, to make in competition the same. Then let's see if the public company has to ask for the same price. Then we have the, uh, a real competition situation. In some cases uh, the private will win. In some cases it will be a dual system. Uh, like in the United States, you have state universities, you have uh, private universities, the private are better there, but in other countries it's the other way around. Uh, and uh, there is good reason to find out why in some countries the private are better and in other countries the, the state owned are better. But it's very important that they are in competition. It's the same with hospitals. And uh, of course from, uh, from the left side, and from the socialist side, you have a good argument to say education and health should also be for the poor and for the needy people. And my answer is, okay, that's right, but give the money directly to the people. Maybe uh, and, and, and prove if it's true that they need it. And maybe they can pay it back later. I, I'm also in favor of, of uh, more business by uh, taking and giving uh, money to people. Uh, but uh, then the whole system, uh, then competition works because 
also the, the public entrepreneur has to ask for the real price. And then uh, the competitor on the private side uh, can be competitive. It can be uh, of the same or uh, cheaper. And uh, the so-called dual system is, on my opinion, a better way than just to ask for total privatization. Tak já bych se musel ještě raz poděkovat našim partnerům. Chtěl bych se poděkovat vám, že jste přišli a zapojili se do diskusie. A především jsem poděkovat panu Jirovi Nekovi za jeho podnětnou přednášku a za odpovědi diskusí. Thank you very much.